Mr. Prince. Yes. How are you today? I'm fine. Are you almost there, my friend? Yes, it's Mr. Go Live Media. All right. What do you want to say to us, Mr. Go Live Media? I just wanted to know what the subject is today. I see you talking about um, the stars that have been created to shoot anyone who goes um, mm. um, of the realm in the backside, if I'm correct. Yeah, no uh, problem. Go ahead. Do you want to talk about that? Go ahead. Uh, what's the problem with it? Do you really believe that we can shoot a, a devil who lives in the earth by a star? Why not? The star is so big. Do you know how big the star is? There are many different types of stars. As well. How, what is the smallest star according to science? I don't know me. I'm not a scientist. Well, right. you tell me. The sun is a smallest star as an example, and it's million times maybe bigger than the earth. How you can shoot a star to the earth to destroy a little tiny genie who your prophet tried to capture him and even he hold he have hold on him and then you know you want to need a star to shoot him to prevent him from going this is a star war of george bush oh it's actually referring to black magic so you know the suit says in the fortune tellers what black um, magic my friend what, what black magic read with me it says the shayateen you know what shayateen mean right and we made it and we made it yes, as yes. missiles you know to shoot at yes. the shayateen okay so this is mm -hmm. speaking specifically about shooting shaitan if he tried to get out of the earth and according to it your prophet according to your prophet uh, he claimed that shaitan he go to allah heaven try to spy at him right so the the reason I mentioned black magic was because um the suit says you know as you if you know anything about black magic which you probably do it's sort of like um communicating with spirits and jinns mm. to tell the future or whatever it may be mm. um so the jinns used to go to the lowest heavens to eavesdrop and then they would bring back information mm. to the um the suit sayer or the fortune teller but okay. after a while mm. um allah guarded the lowest heaven and he would shoot them with shooting stars so, so they can only eat so, or maybe a second okay. so if i may talk yeah. please so you are saying to me the the uh, this is before muhammad they used to go and spy correct yeah okay after muhammad allah he installed a new security system if you want to call it that okay why allah don't want to shoot the shaitan before muhammad why before he allowed the shaitan to go and spy but after Muhammad he came, Allah he stole a new security system. If they try to go to heaven, Allah will shoot them. What is the purpose? Okay, before I continue, I just want to ask one condition. Hmm. Please be fair and don't mute me. Because I noticed in our last conversations, you only put my, the volume my, up. My, on the my friend, if, if somebody tried to speak over me, make me shout and lose my voice, I'm speaking for many hours, as you know. And if somebody mm. want to make me scream, scream, then I will give up. I will hang up on you. I don't have to talk to you. you don't have to talk to me. So let us be respectful. And I will see, did I hang up on you? As long as you let me talk and I let you talk, let us have a conversation. Mm. Okay, now, so you're a prophet. After he came, Allah, he decided to protect the heaven from the spy of the shaitan. Why he did not do that before Muhammad? Well, um, as you know, I think we've had this discussion before with regards to magic. And the demons, and it's all part of Allah's makeup of how everything works and the test for man. So the angel, angels that brought down the black magic at Babylon, Harut and Marut, and then uh, another situation where Solomon had the jinns working for him that to build the temple. Friend, see, here we go. We are going in a circle now. We talk about that. We can go back and talk again. But answer me about this: Why Allah now He implement a security system not before Muhammad He came. Muhammad is the last prophet. Muhammad came after 124,000 Muslim prophets, according to Muslims. Okay, what make Allah now? Now Allah, he remembered to install a security system. Shaitan was spying all this time at Allah and Allah don't care. What happened? Well, that's totally up to God. You're questioning God. Like, no, you can't everything have a reason. Have what is the reason? Up. Everything, everything have a reason. So Allah, before he did not mind that Shaitan spy at him. Now this Allah, he did not, he, he don't want Shaitan to spy at him no more. What happened? Well, well, according to Islamic belief, yeah. it's the same reason why um, the Torah came and the um, the Bible came okay. and then Islam came. How Shaitan came can spy? Explain to us how Shaitan can spy at Allah. Okay, do you remember our previous conversation when I was trying to make a distinction mm -hmm. between Iblis, Shaitan, Lucifer, the one big Satan that was kicked out of heaven? Mm -hmm. 
and then you have the other jinn, um, which some of them are Muslim, some of them are whatever religion, and the ones who work for shaitan out of the jinn, they are called shayateen okay. in the plural, yeah? No. no. So, repeat your question, please, sorry. Well, how shaitan or shayateen, they spy at Allah? Allah is in heaven, and mm -hmm. the heaven have many gates, many doors. If I show you yeah. the story of your prophet, he said that even the yes. heaven have seven right. gates, Correct. right? Okay, so there are seven gates before they can arrive to Allah. How they can spy at Allah speaking? Well, um, they, they they basically well, um, with regards to the jinn, there are different types of jinn: flying ones, walking ones, whichever ones. Mm. There's a powerful one called an ifrit. Afrit? Um, mm. Ifrit, yeah. Afrit. And I would assume they, they flew up to the lowest heaven mm. and tried to spy on the ongoings in the lowest heaven from the outside, literally in terms of listening into sound. How they can listen, you know, the, the, the distance between the heaven and each uh, the other one is 500 years and there's seven doors and seven walls. So how the genie, the Afrid, the one you call him Afrid, he can listen to what Allah is saying behind seven doors. What they do? I well, mean, think they, of, you think like think they, do, it, they do hacking or if something? You was, if you was to go and put your head on someone's door mm -hmm. in, in front of their house, I'm sure you'll hear something. Mm, but uh, there's seven doors be be before they can hear anything. There's yep. seven doors. Are, are you telling me that Allah, he built those doors and they are useless? No, well, um, the doors and the gates have a significance. What is the, um, what is the, the point way, of those the way, doors? Yeah, the but, way you're portraying it, it's almost like you're saying there's door upon door upon door. Yes. It's more there's doors in certain places. So some gates are like the gate of fasting. Another gate may be the gate of praying. Another gate may be the gate of charity. My Depending friend, no, is it? A, no, 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 no. This is not true. That's not true. The gates we are talking about are physical gate, and there's doors, and there's there's guards, and your prophet each time he fly, uh, 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 he know the guard, the, 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 the famous yeah. night journey. Yes, yes. The guards they ask, uh, uh, who is he? That he was invited, you know. So uh, when when we speak about the doors, we speak about not doors in the same wall. There are doors, there are seven gates in seven fences, and the distance between them, according to your prophet, 500 years. So now you are saying to me that the angels, they can come, and they go, and there are seven doors and seven fences, and yet they can put their head, head or their ears on the fences of the heaven, and they can listen to what Allah is saying. Correct? Well, if it's the law of heaven, hmm. I'm assuming it would be the the last gate, the one gate for the exit. Okay, but so Allah is in like the seventh heaven. Gate. But Allah is in the seventh heaven, right? He's on top of the heavens. Okay, he is, but he is in the, uh, in the he is in the last heaven, the seventh heaven, right? He's not in the heaven, no. He's, He's um, above the heavens on his throne in mm -hmm. a manner that suits his majesty. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. But according to your prophet, okay, in the in the seventh heaven where Allah is located, do he have air? Uh, we only go by what we've been told. If there's, so if there's, we, if there's anything would, above Allah, there's okay after Allah. I wouldn't believe that God needs air to breathe. Okay, if there's anything above Allah, no. Okay, well, your prophet he said that there is something above Allah. Read with me, uh, please. This is Sahih Hadith says, I said, Oh Allah, Messenger, where was our Lord before He created the, His creation? He said, He was above the cloud before which was air and above which was air and water. Do you see it? Hold on. It's because I'm on the Skype. I'm not actually looking at the YouTube, but I'll be there shortly. Mm -hmm. But anyway, do you continue? Okay. So Allah, He is not as Muslim they claim. Here we go. There's air above Him, and there's air underneath of Him, and there's even water there. So, you know, you say to me that Allah is above the heaven. He is in, you know, in a in a place where there's water and air, and there's air above Him, and there is air underneath of Him. Now. Maybe because there is air, the shaitan, he can spy at him because as I know, sound does not travel in the space. Scientifically, yes. Mm. So how the shaitan can hear the sound of Allah if the space is empty and there is no air? Well, once again, uh, mm. we believe in the unseen and the knowledge of the ghaib, as mm. they say. Mm. And whatever God wills, um, He wills. And if He said it, we believe it.
Mm, okay. Now, when Allah He said that you cannot go out of the zone of the earth, and He is challenging the mankind and the genie, and then we find that people they went to the moon. So how Allah He made a challenge, which is a false challenge. So, are you talking about challenge in um, Surah Taha? The chapter of Ar Rahman. Chapter, Ar -Rahman. chapter of Ar Rahman. Ar -Rahman. Yeah. yeah. La fanfudu illa bi sultan. Right, yeah, okay. Right, okay. Um, well, he made this challenge after he's created the barrier with the shooting stars. Okay, but after that, the American they went there, the Russian they went there, and you know, and uh, how this happened. Well, so how Allah he challenged the man and the genie to go, yet they go. No, no, no. no. You're talking about NASA missions and comparing them to the lower heavens. The lower heavens cannot be seen, and they cannot be reached by our means. Oh, they cannot reach. Okay, these are humans. Okay, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Isn't it your God, Allah? He said that we decorated the lowest heavens with the stars. I'm not sure. You bring up the reference. Uh -huh. well, what do you mean? I don't know the reference. Suddenly, you do not know the reference. You know, here we go. The reference in the front of us in chapter uh, 67, verse number five, and we have. Adorn the lowest heaven with lamps, so the lowest heaven starts from where the lamps are exist, and we are in we we belong to a lamp actually. We as an earth, we belong to the sun as a group of planet. Correct. We have adorned the lowest heaven with lamps. Mm. And we have made such lamps as missiles to drive away evil ones. And... Mm. Yes, but that that could be paradise within that heaven. It would be just referring to it as the sky, the sky. Oh, my friend, the, according to your God, the, according, is, according to your God, there's only stars only in the lowest heaven. So, if you arrived to where there is a stars, which is the space we have around the earth, you are in the lowest mm -hmm. heaven already. So, Shaitan he arrived to the lowest space where the stars are in this space. And then we know that the space is empty and there's no voice can go through. How shaitan he can hear Allah from the seven heaven? Because um, in the realm of the jinn is a totally different realm compared to the realm of, of mankind. Hmm. So what about the I'm human being? What about, what about the human being? Okay, what about the human being? We go back. So when Allah, he changed the genie and the human being to go out of the zone of the earth. You know what the zone of the earth, right? Yeah, skies and the hmm. galaxies. So what yeah. So how how they were able to go out of the zone? No, the zone of the earth is not like a galaxy. What galaxy? The zone of the earth is you cannot you cannot leave the earth. As simple as that. Right. Well, like I said, in in the world of the shayateen, we're not really in the world of the unknown. What about the human? The human? The human? The human? Spirit, the, the human there'll they be different up. laws of science. Mm. There'll be different laws of science. Well, they went up there. They didn't see the paradise. They didn't. They didn't see anything with their eyes. That okay, they question. still today haven't seen a jinn. Question: How your prophet he went there? He. It, it was a miracle. How? He. He. He physically went there. It okay. wasn't in a. How? How? How he went there? Well, um, he went on a beast called Burak. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily a winged horse, as people say, mm -hmm. but it's between the sizes of a horse and a donkey. It's, it's something that's not of this world, so it's right. hard to describe. Okay, flying, uh, flying, but that doesn't have wings, correct? Okay. So, in that heaven, in that heaven, the paradise no, no, of Allah... No, no. It might have wings. I think it does have wings. No, I never saw that it says have wings. I don't know. I never saw that. Maybe you can show me. I will learn from you. But as I know, it is a sexy female mule, very white, because Allah, he hit the black people, and he is that color. <laughs> where, where did you get this stuff from? Yeah, because... Like, because where did you get this sexy female mule? Oh, what are you talking about? Sure, we can, you know. What are you talking about? Isn't it, isn't it your prophet, he described how beautiful this uh, beast is? So, yes, it's a sexy female, which is very white, and it's a very have a long legs and each head of her leg can go to the beyond the horizon now if we go and we ask you is the beast is a physical beast the one you call him beast not me i believe he's like just a donkey between a mule he's a mule between the horse and the donkey that's a mule so that mule who is very white huh, which is female in the same time because supposedly he is different kind of animal who, who, who went all the way to heaven what is you know this is this is a physical journey you said physically muhammad he went there correct yes okay did he find in the place where he arrived to the heaven he found the euphrates river 
The what river, sorry? Euphrates. The Euphrates. Or oh, Euphrates. Hmm. Um, yes, okay. there is some narrations regarding that. All right. I think so, so, be fair so how, how in the heaven of Allah, which is in the sky, in the seven heaven, there is Euphrates? Well, that's down to how Allah designed paradise. But Euphrates is in exist in the, in the, in the south of Turkey. Yes, and why can't it exist in paradise? Why can't they be an identical one? My friend, my friend, don't you see? Euphrates, you see, the, the Old Testament speak that the garden of Adam and Eve is in a certain location, and it mentioned even the, the river Euphrates, but it makes sense. This is in the earth. The garden of Adam and Eve in Christianity and Judaism is not in the sky. It's a garden in earth. Now, your prophet, he found that Euphrates and the Nile River are from the rivers of heaven. So if his heaven is up in the seven galaxy, whatever it is, how we find the Nile River and Euphrates there? Because it's down to God how he wants to design things like. I mean, my friend, but they are not the there. They are here in Earth. You, uh, if your prophet, yeah. he went, how, they are, how the Nile is here in Africa, go through Ethiopia, go through Egypt, all the way to the sea, and then we find that the river of the Euphrates is start and under the tree of Allah in the seven heaven. Because it could be identical rivers. Like I said, we don't really have a map of the geography of paradise in heaven, do we? Ah, okay. So, but don't you think that Muhammad here is making up stories that this is a heavens, that this is Mount, like this is a, this is a, uh, uh, this is what heaven is about, and there's rivers, one is called Euphrates, and one is called Nile, and obviously he's confused between the Garden of Eve and the Garden of Eve in Islam and the Garden of Eve in the Bible. If I ask you now, so you, the Garden of Eve uh, in Islam, sure. the Garden yeah. of Eve in Islam, is it in earth or in heaven? The Garden of Eve, hmm. um, you tell me. No, you tell me, you are the Muslim, I'm asking you about Islam, not Christianity. Well, the Garden of Eve, hmm. did you say? Hmm. I'm not sure. Is there something called the Garden of Eve on the earth? Hmm. I'm asking you. Is the Garden of Eve garden. Is in heaven or in earth? The Garden of Adam Eve, and Eve, where Adam and uh, Eve the, they used to be living there, is it in heaven or it's in earth? I would say it's in heaven. All right. That's a, that's a good answer. According to Islam, yes. According to Christianity, no. Now, uh, as long you agree that the heaven of Adam and Eve is in there in the heaven and muhammad he says that there is a tree where underneath three four rivers they come from there and then we find that the nile river and the the euphrates river they are here in the earth uh, there's no way they are coming from heaven I and mean, this is very silly obviously your oh. prophet is very confused about where are they located and what heaven he's talking about there's no way muhammad he went to the sky Yet he is talking that he found the Euphrates River and the Nile River coming out of the tree of Allah. It's possible. As you know, as a Muslim, you know, when you ask me, um, could your prophet have lied? You probably already know I'd rather jump off a tall building than ever mm. say my prophet, peace be upon him, lied. Mm. So who? The prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Rather, uh, before I accuse the prophet of lying, I, I would rather die 50 times over. I'm, sure is, you're aware not, of it. I'm not asking you to accuse anyone. I'm just trying to have a conversation for you, my friend. I'm not insulting. Yeah. For me, Muhammad is an official certified liar. You know, I say it as it is. But you are a believer, no problem. But as you see, you're a prophet. He claimed that he found rivers and he called them Sihan and Jihan. And those are rivers are exist in the, in the, in the Middle East. So Sihan and Jihan and your fetish and the Nile. He found them where? Coming from under the tree of Allah. And then we, we find in the Quran that Muhammad is speak about that if you go to heaven, Allah will try to shoot you. And where the heaven is, the lowest heaven where it is, this is where he shoot the shaitan, in the lowest heaven where the lamb are located. Okay. Now Muhammad here is arriving to the Nile and to the Euphrates. So he did not go to heaven? Well, that's your opinion. How no, do you, you know what's no, within power? My friend, no, you tell me. Okay, now I want your opinion. How your prophet, he went there and he found the source or the spring of the Nile River and Euphrates. 
how both of them they are coming from under one tree Nile is in in, in in the middle of Africa and the Euphrates is in the south of Turkey so we have thousands of miles between them yet both of them they are coming from under one tree is the tree of Allah well it could be identical rivers that are in paradise and like I said, we don't know the creation of paradise. We don't know how, how paradise was created, um, how what, what's within paradise, the geographical realms and what it's like is nothing like the human eye has ever seen. Mm. So for you to make a comparison mm. with the earth, I, I don't see the point. My Just friend, because- It's very funny, you said to me, nothing, nothing we can compare with heaven. And yet you say your prophet, he says to you, honey and milk, isn't it? Honey and milk is money and, and honey and milk. Isn't it so, wine is wine? Is it is it is it Euphrates as a river we know? Is it the Nile as a river we know? So how nothing we can compare, but they have it. We have what they have already. We have Euphrates. We have the, the Nile. We have the honey, and we have the milk. Yes. Okay. But the milk and the honey um, and the wine will not be the same as of this world. Mm. It will be totally different. Mm. For example, that uh -huh. that does not intoxicate. Um, so once again, it's like me saying to you. Hmm. Describe heaven. So you are saying to me the wine and the heaven there will be there will be alcohol free Well, we don't know that but we know it does not intoxicate. Okay, so they are alcohol But you will not get toxicated. So the wine is the same, but you will I don't Allah, know if it's yeah. alcohol. You see what like the, what the tafsir says that the, you will not get toxicated. It's not the wine is not wine The wine is a wine, but you will not get it drunk. Now. That's a good thing for you I'm so happy for you But you will notice with me here. We are going in a circle trying to avoid that Muhammad cannot be a person who went to the seven heaven as he claimed. First of all, there's no witnesses. Is that correct? I give you the response of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq Anhu. What he did say? Did he say he went? Did he say he went? Then he did. Abu Bakr, he said he went? Did he see him? Yeah, and he said if the Prophet said it, it happened. Ah, here we go. If the Prophet said it. <laughs> <laughs> my friend what kind of answer this answer is I'm saying to you do Muhammad have a witness or not no let me tell you something yesterday I went to the seven heaven in the top of a flying uh, chicken do you believe me no because you're a great liar okay so how <laughs> if I say that how if I say that is a lie but if your prophet he say that is it true both of us we have no witnesses but he is a prophet and he performed miracles. He spread Islam across the world. Look mm. at the things this man did. Yeah. What he did. This is not the work of a normal man. What did what he, he do? Did. He destroyed, how, he destroyed was, the world. People, they cannot even walk in the street safe. People, they cannot how, have safety. What? People, they cannot have security. Men are killing women. Men are raping women. Women, they cannot walk in the street securely alone unless there's a guardian with them. Otherwise, they will be raped by Muslims. Number one countries of rape in the world are Muslim countries. In Saudi Arabia, if a woman she walk around in the street without a guardian, she will be raped, kidnapped, and nobody will hear about her again. So what Muhammad did? Muhammad he brought nothing but disaster. Now answer me. So let, jealous. Let of me Muhammad. show everybody. Let me show everybody that you Muslims are are fairy tale followers. Where in the Quran it says that Muhammad he went or he taken to the heaven? Why did you show me? You show me. You show me. You are the Muslim. Where in the Quran? Oh, sure. Where in the Quran? Sure. Says, where in the Quran, my friend? I want, I'm asking you. Where in the Quran? I mean, such a thing happened. The Quran says that the Arab they keep asking Muhammad for a miracle. Well, if this is if this has happened, that's this is a miracle to go up to heaven, isn't it? Yes, of course. Okay, yeah. okay. So why the Quran says we refrain from sending miracles if he took Muhammad to heaven? Chapter 17, verse number <coughs> 59 says that Allah he refrained from sending miracles okay but you say to me that the Prophet said that Allah took him to the seven heaven where you can show me that in the Quran that Allah took him to the seven heaven it, it may not be in there so um, you are saying to me such a thing which is extremely important is not in the Quran but in the Quran we have a story that an ant she told the other ants to hide Allah have time to tell us the story what happened between the ants Allah has well, time to tell us about the bird who is, is who is a who is a captain in the army or general in the army of the chicken Allah have time to tell us all the fairy tale stories uh, stories about the flying carpet of Suleiman but Allah has no Gosh. time to tell us how Muhammad he went to heaven 
Well, it's totally up to him what he puts in the Quran, isn't it? But secondly, mm-hmm. um, we we get our prayers from the discussion that happened between Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Allah um, in Isra wal Miraj. Okay, and let me ask you. Let me ask I did that okay. five times. Hold on, hold on. In the Isra al Miraj, was it a vision or it was a real journey? Mm, I see you're aware of the disputes within scholars regarding this. Scholars? Uh, some say it was a vision, mm. and some say it was physical. I, I'm of the opinion that it was physical. Okay, so you are a person who is accusing Allah to be a liar, because this is okay. not the scholar. This is not the scholar opinion. This is Quran, my friend. All right, hang on. So with regards to your point you know, about... You know, no, you do not know. Okay, which verse in the Quran saying this was a vision? Okay, no, but I found the verse. That my, friend, spoke about. I, my friend, Actually, I challenge you to tell me which verse. You, you never heard of this before and don't play that you know. Just because Quran, I said to you, just because you know, just because I said to you that the Quran says that, a second ago you said to me, the scholars, they say that. A second ago. Now I said to you, to, but this is not the scholars. Uh -huh. huh? Come on, be, be honest, be fair. Okay, Come on. okay. Always. Okay. Quran to 17, verse 1. Exalted is he who took his servant by night from Masjid al Haram to Masjid al Aqsa, mm -hmm. whose surroundings we have blessed to show him our signs. Indeed, he is the hearing, the seeing. Okay, and Masjid al Aqsa is not in heaven. Yeah, but you never thought, but he, he told <laughs> part of the journey. my friend, come on, you're focus, on me, focus. Don't be nervous. Don't be just nervous. Just Don't be just nervous. Just take, just take, it so easy. take it easy. Take it easy. I say to you, is it? This is first of all the verse here proving that the story of Muhammad is a big fat lie because nowhere it says I took you to heaven. It says I took you to this from the second mosque into the farthest mosque. Where is the farthest mosque? There's no mosque at that time. There's no Muslims there. What mosque? I Hold on. This verse okay. Place. What is the name of that mosque and where it's located? Can you tell me? In Al Aqsa in Jerusalem. Aqsa is just a farthest. It's not a word. It's not a name. It's just a mean far away. The far away mosque. Where? Come on, you're all aware that, that my friend Al Aqsa in Arabic. You can ask any Arab guy the word Aqsa I means the farther most, the most far most. Muslims, there was no Muslims around the world. What mosque? When the first mosque is built in Jerusalem, after you occupy Jerusalem, after you invade Jerusalem, and Umar al Khattab he took it over, and then you start building mosques. So, what mosque Muhammad is talking about that he went during the night? Trying to say Masjid al Aqsa was built by Umar al Khattab. Is that what you're trying My to say? My friend, there's nothing it's called al Aqsa. This is a lie. This is a lie. There's nothing it's called al Aqsa. Oh, and long see. after that, Abdul Malik ibn number one and other caliphate, they start destroying temples from Lebanon and other countries and taking rocks and build a mosque there in the top of a Jewish temple. There's nothing it's called al Aqsa. It's a lie. It's a big fat lie. Same time, my friend. As you see here, where is in the verse it says that Allah He took Muhammad to heaven? I asked you, where in the Quran it says that Allah He took Muhammad to the heaven? Can you show me the verse? I repeat that again. Okay, well, part of the verse tells you of the miraculous journey, right? It tells you about the journey in one so night. Are you that saying to me that the journey was not to heaven, was only to the mosque which is in Jerusalem? No, it is as Muhammad. So why Allah does not mention which one is more important, the journey to the house of Allah or journey for a mosque in Jerusalem? Well, Allah is not there to give you all of the answers. And what's the point of having faith? My friend, what is the point of saying to me something is is part of the, the journey, which is the most important part of it is to go, go all the way to Allah. Which one is more important? He mentioned to me that Allah, he took him to the father mosque, but he don't want to mention to me that he took him to heaven. Come on, it's like getting something Jesus said. Okay, and then let, say, me said it, let me ask you. Let me ask you again. Let me ask you again. Let me ask you again. Was it a vision or it was a real journey? It was a real journey. Okay, is that a is that an opinion of Allah or opinion of the scholars? It's an opinion of it's the opinion of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the way he described it in the hadith. Hmm. Okay, it's, as he said. All right, here we go. So you are saying to me, anyone he says something different, he is wrong, right? Well, there's difference of opinion, isn't there? No, listen, like, see, don't play with the word. Either you say to me, anyone he believe that it was a vision, he's a liar, or you say to me, it is. He's not, it is he the could, truth. He's, mis he's mistaken. He's mistaken. Okay, I, yeah, I, I, I will take your words, guys. Uh, mm -hmm. Take take uh, take this gentleman. He said that the one who believed that Muhammad did not go 
in real it was a vision he is mistaken okay I like that well we will find that in the same chapter in the same story this is a chapter 17 verse number 60 it says that Allah he did a vision for Muhammad not a journey as real physical thing hmm? let's have a look <clears throat> It's nice to know you unblocked me though. I was expecting to be blocked when I called. Hey, my friend, I don't I don't block you unless you start calling names and start speaking over me. Don't let me talk. So now, does it say there that Allah He showed him a vision, not a true journey? We told thee that thy Lord doth encompass. Or you put something in the way? No, it's in the front of you. And when we said to you, surely your Lord encompasses men, and we did not make the vision which we showed you by a trial for men and the cursed tree in the Quran as well, and we cursed them to fear, but it only adds to their great mm. inordinacy. Mm. Is it a vision or it's not? Well, you're going to have to bring up the tafsir of that verse. No problem. Tafsir. My, 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 my friend, this is the same chapter that's in the front of you. This is about Al Isra. The, everything there is about Al Isra. Okay, in Al Isra, Allah He says that He Allah He saying to Muhammad, "We showed you a vision." What is the vision Muhammad He saw in 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 the story of Al Isra? Well, that he was taken up to the heavens from Masjid Al Aqsa. So it's a vision. It's not a. It's not a real journey. It's a fake journey. It's. A, I saw a vision yesterday. I saw like you know. I saw Trump. He is flying with the cat, and okay. he was singing a song. I mean, is it a real vision or this is a a dream? Sounds like a hallucination. But oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So well, as long as long, my friend, as as long. Hold on, my friend. Hold on, please. My friend, hold on. As long you mention uh, that somebody, somebody sound like is is a uh, he have an illusion. Did your prophet suffer from such a thing in his history? If we open the medical file of your prophet, did your prophet he suffer from illusion? Yes or no? You tell me. Well, according to your pro according to Islam, yes. According to your religion, that the prophet even he imagined himself having sex, but in fact he did not. And this is Sahih al-Bukhari saying the prophet continues for such and such at a period of time imagining that he had sex with his wife but in fact he did not so you said to me that this is sound like an illusion okay Muhammad is suffering from illusion it's been proven by Muslims themselves they believe their prophet he was under an illness which is they call it black magic or whatever they call it but obviously he imagined things even his sex was not real so how you can trust him? He is going to heaven. The Quran says a vision. The Quran says that he did not take him to heaven. The Quran says he took him to the father mosque. And Muslims now, they come with tons of his stories. And Muhammad, according to you, yes, Muhammad, he said, Allah, he took him to the seventh heaven. But maybe this is the vision. Maybe it's a vision. You saying it is true. But as you see, your prophet, he is not to be trustworthy because this guy, he imagined things which is not true. If I am a doctor, or let us say you are a person applying for a job, and I open your medical uh, file, and I find that you've been infected with something, we do not know what is that exactly, that you can, you know, you, you imagine things, you hear voices. Even your prophet, he said that stones, they say to him, Assalamu alaikum. Is that correct? It's true. Yes. Okay. Trees, they speak to him. Trees, they speak to him. They say to him, Assalamu alaikum. Trees, they converted to Islam. So the mountains speak to him, the, yeah, the stones speak to him, the trees speak to him, the speak the, 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 the trees they, they took shahada, the goat spoke to him, the camel spoke to him, and the prophet here he imagined that he is having sex, but in fact he did not. That was one incident where there was black magic involved. My friend, that, what, that, what what one incident? What one incident? What about the, the, the two angels they come and they cut his chest? Is that a real story? Um, there's a difference of opinion where, where that, that narration could be fabricated where they moved are you talking about where they moved to the black spot on his heart my friend my friend does your prophet says that the one who control him it was a Jewish guy his name is Zuraiq uh, Lubaid ibn al-Asam from Bani Zuraiq 
he took some hair from your prophet and he controlled him from far like remote control and he made him imagining things yes or no well that's black magic yes okay. that did happen but with okay, remote no control like so you are you most times believe that your prophet was under the control of voodoo well if it if it stated that it happened mm. it happened mm. what, what can i say okay so if it happened what i can say this is a good answer but isn't it your quran says that you have no authority over my good followers except the good ones um maybe yeah what do you mean maybe it's yes we've no? done this all okay we've we had this it. conversation so how muhammad how muhammad here is imagining things and this is from shaitan and muhammad in the quran allah he said to him that shaitan have no authority over the one who is good except the one who follow thee which means follow shaitan so in order for shaitan to control muhammad he have to be following thee which means following shaitan so the story you are talking about proving that muhammad he is following thee who is the yeah. shaitan that's the thing that people that do black magic now and affect good muslims that are believers they still affect them it, it doesn't mean that they're following the shaitan it's just something that allah laid down as a test to be used mm. by, by men of our time so is a black magic is, is a black magic satanic or it is a godly thing it's satanic okay so here the verse saying that as long as satanic it's mean this is from the authority of shaitan so as long as satanic always, I, this is from the power of shaitan correct uh black what, magic what, is from the power of shaitan okay yeah. so but so as long as it, uh, it, it can only be um it can only work if god will it to work okay no that, that's not true the, the verse here saying so allah by his authority he said that okay i will not let you control any of my good followers but i will let you control the bad ones so muhammad must be from the bad ones <laughs> to be able to the narrate control. the rest of the nation then huh? narrate the rest of the narration that angel jibrail came down Mm. and notified him of mm. where the magic was mm. and then they found the magic in the bottom of a well so they mm. could break the magic okay let me ask you a question about the story about the angel jibreel the angel jibreel he came and he did investigation and he found where the magic is where was where, where, where he found the magic in the bottom of a well okay the magic is a thrown in the bottom of a well how that can happen he literally when i say that i mean he took some hairs off his comb okay loose in it and through mm. the hairs in the bottom of the wall all right muhammad was uh, camping his beard like hijab and some hair come in his you know and somebody took it and he controlled somebody your prophet was controlled by some hair correct yeah with okay. black magic all right. well controlled is a right. strong word that's mean that anyone in the world now can control anyone anyone who knows the word to say he can take some hair from somebody and can control somebody by controlling his hair right controlling is here okay. but it depends on the power of why the magician. guy why the guy he throw the hair which is giving him the power of more muhammad there and why the angels they have to do investigation if they are angels of god don't you know what people do where did you get, where did you get the word investigation from well here we go uh, you see uh, read with me carefully see, okay my friend my friend my friend my friend, my, my friend hold on hold on hold on hold on read with me the story my friend the story in front of us there come to me two men and what happened two men they come to me who are those two men one of them is Jibreel do you agree did you say that in the narration I don't know I you know I'm asking you who are those two men they are two angels and they my are my friend I have not memorized narrations I'm not okay no problem color. here we go your prophet saying there come to me two men one of them sat near my feet and the other near my head and the one near my feet ask the one near my head pointing at me What's wrong with this man? Two angels, one of them he do not know. The other one is smarter, the other, the other one play ignorant. Good cop, bad cop. The later mm. replied, he is under the effect of magic. The first one asked, who had worked magic on him? The bad cop, he don't know. The other one replied, Lubayd ibn al-Asam. Okay, so now we know who is the one who did that to him. The first one asked, what material he did use? 
The other one replies saying, the skin of pollen from, uh, from a, of a male made data tree uh, with a camp in the hair stock kept under a stone in the well of the Haron or the Haron. Then the Scroll down. Okay. Why did you take it off? Huh? Scroll down on the narration. Okay. And then the prophet went to the well and said, this is the same which the same will which they shown me in the dream. Was it was that a dream? Well, it sounds to me like he got wahi revelation from the angel to tell him where it was. Okay. So your prophet obviously he see things in his dream, correct? Yes. Okay. Now after Muhammad, he saw that dream and he found what he claimed that the magic causing him to be bad. Was Muhammad better? Causing him to be bad. It doesn't say this. No, because it, it, he was under magic. He was controlled by magic. Is Muhammad now smarter, better? Well, that, that's a bit of a funny question, isn't it? Um, well, no. Okay, okay, now we found the reason. And the angels, they told him, where is the magic? Now, did Muhammad change? He became better, became healthy. Well, once they um, dismantled the magic, he was fine. Really? Yeah. How you know? Well, the, the effects of the magic were broken once they dismantled the magic. All right. Let us see if Muhammad was fine after the angels, they came to him. How you can prove to me that Muhammad became fine? This is a challenge. I will give it to you. Well, it's just according to our belief. If you find the magic and, and you break the magic, um, there's My various friend, ways. You said you it, said he became it, fine. How you can show me that? I am a person who I learn from you nicely, kindly, please. Can you prove to me that Muhammad became fine after that? Well, I, I'm just going according to the normal rules of exorcism. Okay, where it says that he became fine? Can you show me? Just because something doesn't say that it doesn't mean that it's not true. Okay, my friend Very simple. You said he became fine in order for you to became to know he became fine That's mean you have some reference to show me because you were not there. I was not there, right? So we would not we did not witness what happened So you you need to show me where you get this information from that your prophet became fine Well, I can give you the, the counter statement of where can you show me that he wasn't fine? All over the whole Quran is proving Muhammad not to be fine. Everything in the Quran is proving Muhammad to be not a person who have a, he, obviously he is a person suffering from mental issues. Choose for, me, you want choose for me a chapter me, in the Quran. Choose for me a chapter well, I know in the Quran is not full of mental issues. issues. My friend, well, I, when, I you're, when you're a prophet, he said that if, if the man have orgasm first, the baby will be like the father. If the women have orgasm first, the baby will be like the mother. Was he fine or he was suffering from mental illness? He was fine. So you be believe you as a Muslim that if a man have orgasm first, the baby will look like the father, and if the women have orgasm first, the baby will look like the mother. Well, this depending on scientific research. I'm not a scientist, but this I would take my question. Do word you for believe it. in that or not? Do you believe really you as a person who have a very healthy brain and you are not under black magic? Do you believe that if a woman have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy, a girl, and if the women, if the man have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy? Do you believe in that? I, I will give you the same answer. If the prophet said it, I believe it, hmm. and I will not so, dare so disbelieve. So, so now, what we believe is simply that Muhammad, obviously, you said to me that he is not suffering from mental issues after that solution came in a dream of two angels. But as you see, Muhammad is still acting crazy and saying stupid things. Now you say to me you believe in stupid things that but that, that will not make it smart that will make you both of you stupid with my respect to you if you say so okay so uh, i got what i want uh, thank you very much for calling me is that it? What, what about go, let's move on to something else i, I don't what, mind what you will go about what i mean that's it you know you just to prove to well, me that you must not believe in a stupid <laughs> my friend you just to prove to me that you muslims believe in whatever garbage muhammad he says it doesn't matter if it's crazy stupid or not you believe in it can I ask, how, how, can in I ask the, how in the world you believe that if women have orgasm first the baby will be like the the, the the women muslim women they can't even have orgasm because they do circumcision for them no that's not everyone what see, do you mean see, that's, yeah. let me ask you let me ask you did the prophet yes. wives did the prophet wives have orgasm 
what kind of question is that? Obviously, why, people not? Who are why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? What's wrong? Of What's course. Wrong? Huh? Of course, what is the proof? I have a proof that this is not true. The wife of the prophet, when a woman, a woman, a woman, one of the women who offered herself and she is the auntie of Muhammad, she saw a wet dream. She was watching Playboy before she sleep, and then she have a dream, wet a dream, and she have orgasm. She came to the prophet and she said to him, "Should the woman who sees a wet dream wash her vagina?" The prophet says, "If she have a discharge, huh?" The Prophet said uh, before the Prophet said Ummu Salama, which is the wife of your Prophet said huh, oh, Messenger of Allah <laughs> does th does that really happen? Which mean does that women have this charge how she is his wife, but she never have orgasm That's silly I think you're making yourself look really stupid here because I, I don't get your point because end my of the point day, is you're the women she is saying the women she have with a dream and she have this charge the women the wife of the prophet said <laughs> how a woman she have this charge this is gonna be true Muhammad he said to her yes she have huh she have and as you see this hadith is a sahih hadith it's in sahih al-bukhari it is in sahih muslim it's all over so your point is a woman did not know whether she has an orgasm or not and my that friend is so she never had one a woman she is asking wondering this is the wife of the prophet this is not a woman a woman she right. saw orgasm she is not the wife of the prophet hold on a woman she is not, wait a woman she is not the wife of the prophet she is asking if she sit with see what a dream touching her vagina having orgasm should she wash the wife of Muhammad she said because she said that a woman she have this charge does the women does this happen Muhammad he said to her yes the man has this charge and the women have this charge when the man have this charge ie the sperm and he's explained to his wife the man this charge ie the sperm is thick and white and the women this charge is yellow and so the resemble comes from the ones uh, uh, you know the one who his uh, his his uh, uh, his comes come first so the wife of muhammad she was wondering how this happened how she, muhammad he did not explain yet what is after the first woman she just said that she have orgasm the wife of muhammad she's saying how this can happen how you can have orgasm so well, she wasn't a scientist and maybe she was just asking normally uh, who said that my friend we don't really my, my friend yes she's asking normally thank you very much she's asking how a woman she can have orgasm she's asking how this happened how the women have orgasm that's mean she never have orgasm when a when a wife when a wife she asked her husband my friend when a wife she asked her husband how a woman she can have this charge that's mean she never have this charge well, she went to him asking about the discharge so obviously she did have a discharge so no yeah. the first woman is the one who have this charge the women who have the wet dream the wife of muhammad she said after she heard her she said to her huh, what the women have this charge how this can happen <laughs> well i don't dwell into the sex drive right, the... okay. thank you very much for coming thank you we we'll give you a lot of time yeah right this is Muhammad after he became fine. After Muhammad became fine, he came with tons of verses in the Quran saying the most stupid things ever you can imagine. Dr. Muhammad is a specialist in sex and sexual dreams. And this is a great example of what Islam is about. You heard this gentleman and he was trying to defend his religion, but he have nothing but poopoo. -poo. 